Hey guys, and welcome back. Well, not only do I like planting flowers, but I also like painting them. So today I thought I'd share something different with you all, and that is painting on canvas in acrylic sunflowers. Sunflowers are probably my favorite flower. When I think about them, it, they make me happy. It reminds me of the summer, and they're very, very easy and fun to paint. Follow me on this step-by-step -step process and allow me to unleash your inner artist. Let's get started. Okay, before we get started, I'd like to go over some of the materials that we're going to be working with, starting off with our paint. Under these, each easel, you'll see you have two um, paper plates. One, if you take the lid off, you'll see one plate has the paint, which has the colors that we're going to be using, the blue, the white, the yellow, the green, the brown, and the black. And then you also have a blank plate, an empty plate, and we're going to use this plate for mixing. We also have brushes. We're going to be working with three brushes. The first brush is a large, flat um, brush that's about an inch wide. The second brush is a medium-sized brush, which is about a half inch wide. And then the third brush is a thin, round, um, pointier brush, which we're going to use this for our details. We also have some paper towels that we're going to use for cleaning our brushes. Um, we're going to use some chalk later on for drawing in some of the um, shapes that we're going to be painting. And then lastly, we have two cups of clear water, which we're going to use for cleaning our brushes. This is acrylic paint that we're working with, and it's really important um, to know a little bit about the paint. It, acrylic dries very quickly, and as a result, you have to be very cautious of it getting onto your clothing. If in the event it does get on your clothing and you notice it quickly, it easily comes out with some water, maybe a little bit of soap. However, if it dries, it's gonna be very, very difficult. So it's really important to be mindful of number one, what you're wearing, and number two, if you get paint on you, to immediately try to remove it. Okay, the first thing that we're going to paint is our background. And using, we're going to be using one brush to do that. We're using our large flat brush, and that's going to be for the entire background. And the way that we're going to paint our background is going to be painting wet on wet. And what that means is that we're not going to allow the paint to dry. We're going to just be adding layers of color, primarily the white, the blue, maybe a little black mixed with the blue to create the um, darker shade of blue. And we're going to create an ombre effect where there's dark, starting at the top and it fades down to a very, very pale um, blue, which will represent more or less the sky. So there's a couple ways of starting. The way that I like to start is again, using my large brush and using my paint, I'm going to refer to this throughout the whole video and that's taking a scoop, one scoop of white. And I'm gonna take that scoop and I'm gonna start using my, um, my plain plate to mix the color, but I'm not gonna mix this color just yet. So what I'm gonna do is just put the white onto the canvas. And I'm putting the white basically about, not necessarily touching the top of the canvas, about maybe two inches, and I'll use my fingers as a measuring guide, two or three fingers from the top, I'm just gonna be putting vert, uh, horizontally some brush strokes of white paint back and forth strokes. It's important that you keep your strokes even um, so that we're going in one direction. And I'm going to just add a little more white just to kind of get it started. And again, we're working, you we want to work pretty quickly because the paint will dry, but we don't want the paint to dry. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to, without cleaning my brush, I'm going to take one scoop of the blue and I'm going to start on the top of the canvas. And then as I paint the blue on the canvas, I'm going to be bringing it down into the white. And that's going to create sort of the ombre effect that we were talk I was talking about earlier. 
just back and forth. Again, very important to um, move in one direction. And, you know, if you create streaks, that's actually, I think that's a good thing. That's what you want because, again, in terms of sky, trying to create a sky, um, there's variations of color. And so I'm going to be working down towards the bottom of the canvas. And maybe as I run out of paint, dip my brush again in the white and just continue. Notice I'm not even bothering to clean my brush. I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. And again, important that we stay as horizontal of brush strokes as possible. And you want to make sure that you paint the entire canvas. Just gonna bring it down. It's a very quick, easy step. Back and forth strokes. And everyone's canvas, everyone's background is going to definitely look a little different depending on how you apply your color and depending on how you brush your strokes. And you just kind of blend back and forth. But definitely keeping the darker blue on, on the top of the canvas. So once I, I'm happy with the way the color sort of blends down and fades to a lighter shade towards the bottom, I'm going to work myself, work my brush back up to the top of the canvas. Okay, and this time I'm going to add more blue. So I want the top of my sky to be a little darker. So on the very edge, I'm gonna add some blue. I also, I like painting the edge of my canvas. Okay. And you'll notice how by working wet, it's much, much easier to blend. Okay. And I think I want more blue on here. You could add as much blue. Try to keep it. Yes. I mean, you could have a darker shade. Now, I'm going to do just a touch of black on the top. Just a dab of black on the top. And what that's going to do, that's going to mix in with the blue and create like a darker shade of blue. I'm going to add a little more blue onto that. So there's definitely a, sh a shadow and sort of darker sky on top that radiates into a lighter shade of blue on the bottom. Now, if you notice your brush is getting a little muddy, that's why we have our water. Just clean your brush. We're gonna go back over that. You want to dry off your brush. Maybe just pick up a little more blue. Back and forth. Pick up a little white. And this being acrylic, it's very, very forgiving, this paint. If you don't like something, a, a color or a shadow or a shade, you can easily let it dry and then just go right back over it. It covers very, very easily. Okay, but you want it, you can have fun with this too. I mean, just kind of make it as... And I sort of like the way that looks. Again, every time I, I, I painted this painting, it looks a little different, but I sort of like the grayish blue on top. It comes into a clear blue and then it fades into a whiter, um, lighter blue. Maybe what I'll do is just pick up a little more of black and maybe a larger amount of the blue, mix it together. That might be, now the black is very, very strong, so you might not want to mix that much black more blue and then go over the top to 
create a little darker. And this is the background, so a lot of it's not gonna be visible. Your flowers are gonna be on top of it. You could also sort of arch it a bit on top or not. But I do like the idea of creating like a streaky, um, it gives it a little more interest. Picking up a little more blue. And it's one of those things where you could not, you could overdo it or, or you don't realize when to stop. I often find myself doing the same thing. And then just maybe touch the sides a bit. I'll go back later and, and paint in the sides. But the whole time you're using one brush and notice I haven't really cleaned the brush that much. I'm not really happy with this, so I'm just gonna just kind of take broader strokes. I think I need to clean my brush, obviously. But if you work quickly, even like here, you'll see there's like dark. I'm not really worried about that too much. Um, I'm gonna clean my brush. And I'm gonna take some white. I'm just gonna kind of go over that. Just like that. And that I think is it. I'm not going to. And that's it. If you should, by some chance, as you notice here, I got a little drip of water. Again, I wouldn't worry about that too much because it's going to be covered. It does happen easily. I would clean your brush as, as best as you can and just kind of gently, there you go, and it's gone. So there you have it. That's the background, first step of your sunflower painting. We're going to let this dry for a few minutes. As I said, curl it dries quickly, and we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, the next step, we are going to decide on the composition of our sunflowers. This particular painting has three sunflowers, and I'm going to show you um, exactly how to place those sunflowers. The first thing that I start, and that I fir that I, first thing I focus on is the center of each flower. So, as I said earlier, I like to use my fingers, my hand. Um, we all have different size fingers, we all have different size hands, but you can use doesn't really matter more or less, but to use that as a guide um, in terms of where we want to place it. So I'm going to start off with the center sunflower, and that sunflower I'm going to measure a hand depth, let's say, from the top of the canvas, and I'm going to make a little mark with my chalk, just a little tiny mark. The chalk will come off later, not a big deal. And what I will do is I found a cup, just the cup that I'm using actually to clean my brushes, um, and I'm going to use the bottom of the cup, and it's about two and a half inches in diameter. Um, it just makes it a little easier. And what I'm going to do is just place it on the canvas and kind of use it as a guide to trace, and I'll just do this freehand, to trace sort of a circle. If you're comfortable doing it freehand without um, some kind of template, that's fine too. So that's going to be our center sunflower, but it's not center in the canvas. It's a little higher, like I said, about a hand's depth from the top. The second sunflower is going to be lower, and it's going to be off to the side. And I think rather than having a whole sunflower appear here, I'm going to have it partially off the canvas. I think it makes it a little more interesting. So I'm going to just freehand this one also, but you can use your your guide here if you needed to. And I'm gonna just kind of trace or draw a half circle with the chalk. And then the third and last sunflower will be slightly lower than that. And that's gonna be on your left-hand side of the canvas. And that will be maybe three quarters of the way exposed. And I think for, um, filming purposes and more visibility, I'm, I'm going to just sort of outline 
with a darker colored chalk. I should have thought of that earlier, but that again, center, hand width down. The second one is half, a little lower. And then the third, it could be a full circle, it could be a partial, th uh, three quarters of a circle. And again, the circles do not have to be perfect. The good thing about painting nature, nothing is perfect. So it could be a little misshapen, that would be perfectly fine. So there you have your three centers. Okay, so our next step, we are going to use our medium-sized brush. It's a flat brush, medium-sized brush, and we're gonna be working with straight, using the brown. We're just gonna be blocking in the first color of the center of the flower, and we're just gonna paint it in, in a solid fashion. So you could just, and you'll notice this paint, this type of paint, it may not be the, it may not be as opaque as you would like it to be, but it's gonna be perfectly fine because we're going to go back over it with other color and other detail. So we're laying down our first shade of brown. And it, as you can see, it's not a perfect circle. And as I said earlier, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. And I'm gonna do this piece here. And I like turning the brush and letting, letting the brush do the work. And then we're gonna do our third center. Like so. This, even though I say that it doesn't have to be perfect, it does bother me a little bit when it's not. So I'm gonna go back and just kind of round it out a bit. So there you have it. And again, this is a very, very personal individual thing. If you want the three sizes to be similar, you can go back and adjust it like so. Okay, so you have your three centers. I'm gonna clean my brush and we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, the next step, we're using our small brush, our thin small brush. And what we're going to do is just decide on the stems. We're going to put our stems in and sunflowers, as you probably know, grow very, very straight. So there's, it's a straight line that we're painting from the top of the center of the flower to the very bottom of the canvas. And what I like to do, if you notice, I use my finger as a guide and I just start in the center and I, I just go straight down to the bottom of the canvas. And as you can see, the paint ran out. So I go back over it, maybe a little lower And you just keep repeating that process until you get, it doesn't have to be a perfectly straight stem either. I don't like painting upwards. I feel like I personally have more control when I paint downward. Try to go, and there you have it. But, and it could be a thicker, Little thin, it maybe go a little thicker, maybe a double thickness. Here, your first stem, and then maybe just right along the very edge of the canvas, I will do my second stem. There you have it. And then I'm gonna go over to my left hand side and this is a shorter stem. And simple. And I personally love what I'm painting and I notice that there's a streak involved because to me that becomes more, there's more interest when there's 
um, and it's not solid coverage. There's a little more um, variation, I guess, in the, sh the brush stroke. So that's it. You have three flower centers, three stems. What you can do is with your chalk, just make slight marks sort of in, for your own purposes, indicating how far out you want your petals to be. Just be helpful, I think, in mapping out your... Okay, and that gives me an idea of where the petals of the sunflower will be, and now I could focus on putting in my leaves. So again, using the middle medium-sized brush, Load it up with some green. I'm going to start maybe, um, let's see, I want to put a leaf. Let's say start here. I want to put a leaf, and as I was showed you earlier on the plate, create this heart shape. And I turn my brush and let the brush create the shape. Sort of like that. And again, I can go back later and give it shadows and highlights and that type of thing. That's one leaf. And that's a little lower on the left-hand side. Maybe I'll come here and put leaf on this, in this direction, going in the opposite with your heart shape, like so. So I'm turning the brush, creating a heart. There's your second leaf. And as we move down the stem, our leaves could get a little larger. But to make this as realistic as possible, we're not gonna have all the leaves actually look the same. Maybe this one will go here. But if you look at the shapes, they're like hearts with a little bit of a curve. And that's basically how you create your leaf shape. Okay, and then maybe, what do we want to do? Maybe here, we're going to do a different type of, well, maybe do another heart shape here. I mean, you could easily do the same shape if you'd like, but like that there to be variation. Okay. I also think there could be a stem. So therefore, you know, so far we have the four leaves, we have a leaf over there. I think I want to change up the shape of my leaves a little bit. But before doing that, I'm going to go back to using my thinner brush, and I'm going to create another stem behind this flower, just so that it kind of breaks it up a bit. And I'm not going to necessarily go, well, maybe I will. I'll start here and just go up and kind of curve it into the other. This could be a stem of a, of a bud that hasn't opened yet, perhaps. And what that's going to do, I'm going to create some different shape leaves on here. So maybe this is just going to be a pointier leaf. And then I'm going to use, now I'm using both my medium and my small brush, just to make it easier. Maybe create some small leaves. And at this point, it's really your call in terms of how many leaves, the shape of the leaves, the size of the leaves. It's really what's gonna make your painting your painting. Maybe I'll just put a little leaf here. Now, don't forget, we're gonna go back in and we're gonna, we still have our petals. So these leaves are actually gonna sort of fall behind the petals. Are are going to really like sort of jump out at the um 
to the front of the painting. I'm gonna add maybe a half leaf here. I just lift my canvas so you guys can see. But also like maybe a leaf that comes off of the canvas. Okay. And right now the leaves are sort of just attached to nothing. We're going to attach each leaf. But right now we're just placing the leaves. And we're gonna add a leaf here. And if you keep your brushes clean, you, you maintain that nice sharp point, you'll be able to, when shaping a leaf, really establish the sharpness, either for the edge of the leaf or, let's see, I'm gonna put a leaf maybe here. Maybe a few more leaves here, smaller leaves. And I think we can use another leaf. I'm going to use my large brush and maybe put another leaf here to kind of fill that space. Okay, so there you have it. These are random leaves, random sizes, shapes. And what I'm gonna do now with my thin brush is I'm gonna create the stems that are, that are actually attached to the leaves. So the stems come from the center stem and it goes into the leaf. So it's like a little curved type of, so I'm coming from the center of the main stem and go into the leaf. the center main stem are going to the leaf. And we could go back and correct shapes if you need to. Um, I can also go from your stem. But it's sort of this curve type of stem that attaches to the main stem. Click on that one. I said this paint, this type of painting is very forgiving, so. I'm not worried about this connecting because there's going to be petals here. Let's see, make a little attachment here and one here. So as long as all our leaves are attached to the main stem, I think we're in good shape. I'm gonna let this dry, I'm gonna clean both my brushes, and then we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, similar to the leaf stroke, the way that I, I showed you how to create, how to shape the leaf using the brush, I'm going to show you the same or similar technique for maintaining or creating a petal. Using my small brush, the small round um, detail brush, I'm picking up some yellow on my brush and I think I'm going to pick up some white. So it's white and yellow together on the same brush. And I'm going to create the petal shape. And the way I'm going to do that, there's a couple ways of doing it. You could start from wide to thin I think is probably the better way of doing it. Where you can go thin to wide. The reason I like building and loading my brush with both the white and the yellow is because it gives it like a two-tone effect, which I think is a little more interesting rather than just a solid yellow, yellow petal. So if you'd like, while your leaves are drying, you can practice on a clean plate how to make your petals. So you, it's just these long
sort of almost like a flame like shape and you can decide whether you like doing it from the wider part going up or then going down to wide. I would definitely practice this a couple times on a clean, clear plate just to get the use, the flow of the, of the shape of the petal before we move on to our actual painting. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the center sunflower. Let me start on the top and I'm going to just start mapping out. And again, using those chalk guides, guide marks that I put earlier. And what we want to do is I want to, now there's all different types of sunflowers in terms of petal size, petal shape, but I want to maintain some kind of uniformity going around in terms of the petals. I want them to be close to one another and I want them sort of radiating out all in the same direction. So I'm going to take my time doing that. So I'm gonna kind of just with a dot of paint determine, this just makes it helpful for me. Like, so in other words, that's the direction that petal is gonna go in. Just so that I keep it sort of um, uniform. Go up and come down. And that, that sort of means establishing the size of the petal that I want to use throughout this painting. So again, I'm going to make a little dot here just to kind of help me guide me in the direction in which I petal. Now, I really love the fact that, as you can see, this paint is pretty opaque. So you get a lot of, you don't get a solid coverage. I really think it works well here because it gives the petal, each petal, sort of character. Mark this here. Kind of come around. Just take the time doing each petal one by one. Enjoying the process. And I love the idea now, as you, you'll start seeing, how we're going to sort of put the petal on top of the leaf so that there becomes a little more um, sort of layering effect going on with the painting. And if you notice, I allow the brush to create that like very sharp sort of pointed edge. But I think making that little start mark and the end mark is very helpful because it sort of helps you determine how to paint the petal. So there you have it. It's three sunflowers. We have a few more steps in terms of shadows and detail. I'm gonna clean my brush and we're gonna come back, let this dry a little bit, and we're gonna come back and add some shadows and highlights. Okay, petals. We're gonna add a little shadow into our petals using some of the yellow. Maybe, I don't know, maybe three scoops of yellow and a half a scoop of the brown. And I'm hoping that that's not gonna to be too dark, it may be. Okay, 
and I'm just going to mix it so that it's sort of like a streaky brown and white combo. I might want to add a little white to this. Okay, so I added some white, and with my small brush, I'm going to pick up some of the brown-yellow mixture, and I'm going to start exactly how I started earlier, but not the entire petal, just one side of the petal. So you have dark on one side, light on the other. Decide which side, and I would be consistent. And just that little bit of brown mixed in with the yellow really gives it depth. And as I said earlier, you want the streak effect. Because if you ever look into a petal or a leaf, it's not solid. So I'm just adding that darker shade on one side of the petal, leaving the other side sort of the original stroke that we put. And I might go back later and put you even at a highlight. But right now we're act as adding the shadows. terms of shape, streaky effect. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush and then we're going to add some highlights to the petals. But this time, I'm gonna mix white with the yellow. So I have just yellow. There's a little bit of brown in there, but I'm gonna try to avoid that. Yellow with white, or white with yellow. Now I'm going to kind of, on the opposite end, opposite side rather, of where I put the dark shadow of the petal, I'm now putting white and yellow. And that's basic one stroke. I'm starting from the center and working out. Love it when there's a little bit of white that gets mixed in there. It's sort of it's actually a lot of white on that one. But that little bit of white really it sort of makes the petal sparkle. So what I'm doing is I'm picking up white and picking up yellow, and then I'm putting it on the canvas. Okay, we'll go here. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush and then we're gonna move on to the center of each flower. Okay, shadows and highlights for the center of each flower. What I'm doing is going to go to my original plate, pick up some of the brown, maybe two scoops of brown. Actually, it's burnt umber. Two scoops of the burnt umber and maybe a touch of the black. Remember, black is a very strong color. 
And a lot of times if you scoop too much of the black and mix it with whatever you're mixing it with, it overpowers it. So you've got to be very, very careful when using black. Um, okay, actually, use whatever. So this is going to be a little different. I'm gonna use a stippling effect. Stippling is when you have paint on your brush, you kind of just pounce the, um, the paint onto the canvas. So stippling, now I have a, a very, it's almost like espresso, it's a black mixed it with the brown, a very rich dark brown. I'm gonna be focusing on just the outside layer or outside ring, I should say, of the petal. And I'm going to stipple. And, and you really don't want a hard edge on the center of the flower. That's where all the seeds are actually on a sunflower. So you want sort of like a jagged, see how it has like a little bit of a jagged edge to it. You sort of want that. Um, And then what we're gonna do with the same effect, we're gonna to try to go into the center and create a center ring. But again, by stippling like so. If you start this and you realize your paint is too dark, stop, don't continue, and, and remix it. Add more brown to it. But you want, it's a double ring effect. So I'm going to go into this here, stipple here. And when you stipple, it's almost like using a stamp. You can turn your brush so that you're not repeating the same, you know, just kind of twist your brush back and forth as you stipple. If you get a little white, don't worry about it. And then I'm going to do my center ring. I'm adding a little more brown. So I feel like I'm getting a little too dark there. And I'm going to go into this center and stipple here as well. If you happen to get any brown onto your petals, that is not a problem because I'm going to show you the next step that we're going to actually sort of tie in the petal to the center. Okay, so you have your double ring stippling effect on your three. So what I think I, I'm gonna do before I move on to that is I'm gonna pick up more of the brown and maybe a touch of white. More brown. A touch of white because I feel like this part is maybe a little too opaque um, and maybe just kind of go fill in that type of thing. The white again the only reason I add the white is because it's opaque and it helps cover, even if you're mixing a dark color, it helps give it a solid, more of a solid coverage. See, I'm kind of mixing it like that, and then just stippling on top of the dark. So it's a series of rings. Okay, before we move further, I think what I want to do, since I have my brown paint out, I want to switch over to my clean um, small brush. Just put a little bit of the dark brown on there. And what I'm going to do from the center, the center, I'm going to create these little like, sort of like attachments that will indicate how sort of each petal 
is sort of attached so these are small, tiny strokes. So it gives the idea that the, the, the pedal is attached to the center. Small strokes. So when I paint, I prefer standing. Same thing when I cook, when I bake, a lot of, most of the time when I do anything I need to be up on my feet. I can't, because I could step away from a painting. I'm just now softening the edge a little bit. Um, and I could step, take a few steps back and see anything that might need to be adjusted. A little bit of white on my brush. And maybe I'm just gonna create a little, just like some white dots on the center. That gives it a little more the idea that there's like texture involved in that center, which is where seeds are. But notice I'm doing it in the same area. I will be doing it in the same area on each. It's almost where the light is hitting. And you can overdo it with this step, so be very, very careful. Less is more. Okay. I think what I would like to do, and we're almost there, is just kind of few, very touches of highlights on the leaves. It really, really makes it pop. more here and there you have it oh one more thing I forgot to mention the very very last step and I highly suggest recommend this for everyone who's painting this painting to add your name figure out where you want to sign it sign it you could sign it here you could sign it there I personally think signing it somewhere in in the painting is much more um rather than paint you know signing it here you could sign it wherever you'd like though um, but I think it's really important. It's such an amazing um, job that you guys did. I really think putting your name on it, you could date it. I'm adding a little highlight onto the stem. And there you have it. Your sunflowers. Happy sunflowers. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll give this painting a try. Share it with your friends. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel, like this video, and don't forget to click on the notification bell so that you'll be notified the next time a video comes up. Until next time.